Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And for today's reef vlog, I want to do things a little different. I want to sit down in front of the tank, have a couple of drinks with you, and just talk about fish. So, we're getting to the middle of February, which means one of the biggest events of Colorado reefing is coming up, and that's a reef stock. Now, I went to Reef Sock last year and had an absolute blast. Reef Sock is one of the bigger shows in the country and is a Colorado-only show, which is awesome. Every year, it's in Denver, Colorado. So last year I went, I bought a bunch of coral frags, and they had awesome deals. They had really high-end, cool corals, stuff that you almost never see, down to really good deals on $5 frags. I mean, $25 Ganyaporas, big $30 Acras, I mean all kinds of just awesome deals, which is what you want. But then they also had tons of vendors. Ecotech was there, Red Sea was there, Aquamedic was there. So if you own any of their gear and you're interested in what they do, it's really cool to hang out and actually talk to those people about their products. I mean, if you're interested in a Red Sea tank, the reps from Red Sea are right there. You can ask them everything you ever want to know right from the manufacturer, which is cool. They also have really cool guests. Now, two of the guests this year I'm really excited to see are Mike Paletta and Jake Adams. Now, Jake Adams is a really cool guy. He runs the Reef Builders website, which is also the one putting the show on. Now, one interesting thing that Jake mentioned to me was that he wanted me to make a video to put this out because sometimes new hobbyists don't know about it. And last year was actually my first year going to Reefstock because I didn't know about it, but I had so much fun that I wanted to put this out today and let everybody know about it. Nobody's paying me to say this. It's just a blast. It's $10 well spent and it's a blast for the whole family. So let's do that. Let's go to Reefstock if you're in Denver, Colorado. This year it's at the Radisson on February 25th and 26th. So I'll be there on Saturday. So if you see me running around there, let's say hi, let's talk, let's have a blast while we're there. Now, another cool thing I saw was the Chet Aquarium posted an obituary for one of their fists that they lost, which probably seems weird because who posts an obituary for fish losses? Well, this was a very special fish. This was a long fish that they got, and I believe it was 1933, which meant that this fish was in captivity for over 80 years. And this isn't like a koi, which we already know is long-lived. This is a long fish. An Australian long fish lived over 80 years in captivity. Now, at the time of the obituary, they haven't taken, the, they hadn't dissected it yet. But what they're going to do is they're going to dissect it and they're going to count the rings. I believe it's in one of the ear bones and see how old it really is. They're already estimating it's going to be over a hundred years old. So that kind of tells us how long these guys can live in Aquaria. Plus, if you think about the technology that they had in the 30s and 40s to keep fish. I mean, we have advanced so far now. I think in the future we're going to see some incredibly long-lived creatures in our tank. So that is really cool. So the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is not doing water changes. So I'm bad about not getting my water changes. This week has been especially hard. This week is my night shift week plus it's my long week. I really only get one day off. And yesterday after work, I get a text from my tenant that tile had fallen off the wall, so I had to fix that. Today, I spend my time helping my brother do a job. So I don't get time to work on my tanks. And yet, as you can see, it still looks really good. So here's where you can design your systems to kind of work with that kind of schedule, right? Because I want to do a water change on my smaller tanks once a week, but this tank, I hardly ever do a water change on. And here's why. I have a massive skimmer. The skimmer on this tank is an Aqua Sea EV1000. Now, that's a 210 gallon tank. I've got about 450 gallons total with all the water and the sump and the frag tanks and all that. But, you know, it's a moderate, it's a heavy bio load for 210 gallons, but my bio load for 450 gallons is moderate. 
So I've got a massive skimmer. I do carbon and GFO, which I think is actually really important. It keeps the yellowing out of the water and keeps the phosphates down. So I think that's important to avoid those water changes, at least on this style of system. I also have a refugium. The other thing I'd like to point out is look at how big some of these rocks are. I've got four rocks in there that are absolutely massive. When I ordered these four Pukani rocks from Bull Creek Supply, it was four rocks that were over, that were 100 pounds, or four rocks, which means I've got huge density. So the theory is that you can turn nitrates into nitrogen gas. So we're gonna go through the nitrogen cycle, so ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, and my phone's ringing. So by having really big rock in the tank, we get to go clear through the nitrogen cycle past nitrates. So if you remember your nitrogen cycle, you start with ammonia, then you go to nitrite, and then to nitrate. But the theory is, if you have an area in your tank that's anoxic, so where there's no air getting in, you will complete the nitrogen cycle and turn the nitrates into nitrogen gas. Now, in the past, you'll usually see that done with a deep sand bed, which I am not running. I have places that are probably two inches deep at most. But what I do have are huge rocks. Now, these rocks are huge, but somewhat porous. So I do believe I'm probably getting some of that reaction taking place in this tank, which is probably part of what helps me keep the nitrates so low in this tank. And then this leads me to one thing you guys have all been talking about, and that's the bio pellet reactor. So if you remember a few months back, this tank crashed because I put too many bio pellets in at once. And you guys are asking me constantly, am I still running bio pellets? Well, the answer is yes, I am, but it's not very much. I've got like a cupful that I put in three or four months ago, and they've all kind of dissolved. And I've been doing my nitrate test, and to be honest, I'm not getting nitrates showing up, so I don't see any reason to put bio pellets in because my testing's not telling me to put bio pellets in. So I'm kind of almost out of bio pellets, and this thing's still holding almost zero nitrates, so I'm kind of thinking I'm just gonna keep running like I am. So we'll see, this thing's just kind of running out of bio pellets. I guess if I see nitrates, I'll add some, and if I don't, I won't. So. I'm um, not really sure how that's going to work out, but let's round back to Reefstock because the guys from Red Sea are going to be there again, and I'm really interested in talking to them about no pox dosing because that seems really cool to me. So that might be a good alternative to the bio pellets. Now, no pox is a carbon dosing method just like bio pellets, but it's supposed to be more effective. Red Sea claims that there are chemicals missing in normal carbon dosing that are in no pox. So I'm interested to talk to them and see how true that is and how good that really is. So I'm really excited about that. So if you're in the Denver area, plan on going to the Radisson Hotel for Restock on February 25th and 26th. And remember, I'll be there on the 25th Saturday. So Stop me, say hi, we'll have a good time, and I'll see you at Reefstock. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.